Good morning, everyone. Oh, still quiet. Um, before I get started, uh, I just thought it best if I introduce myself. Um, as I've been introduced as Jared Massey from Two Sisters Food Group. Um, I'm head of resourcing there. I've been in in-house recruitment or um, similar for over 10 years now. I'm really passionate about making a big impact, um, but also a realist that you can't get everything right all the time. And so what I'm going to talk about today isn't best in class. There'll be people around this room today who do things better than us. You'll have better stats and all this, but this is all about a journey because we've only been doing this for two years. It's a particularly difficult place to get everything right. Um, so I just want you to see the kind of things that we went through, what's really important to me, what was really important to Two Sisters to, to make an impact, okay? You'll also have to bear with me. This is the first time I've done proper public speaking. I speak all the time in, in the actual company, so I am a bit nervous, so please bear with me. Uh, leave the heckling until we're in the bar later, please. Okay, so we'll get started. Terrible picture of me. So, has anyone heard of Two Sisters Food Group? Don't tell me why. Yeah, obviously a few of you may know us a little bit more now. Of the people who have heard of Two Sisters, do you know exactly what we do? And be honest. No. And therein lies one of the problems. Okay? So, I will give you a quick overview of who we are. So, yeah, before I joined Two Sisters Food Group, I'd never heard of them, ever. But then once you're in there, it's like, oh my God, they own Fox's Biscuits. Every single ready meal that you have in Marks and Spencers and Aldi and the rest is pretty much from them. They, you, they create about 60% of the chicken in the UK. They own Holland's Pies, Goodfellas Pizzas, 98% um, of the Christmas puddings. So they've got a lot of brands and businesses within one big brand, but people haven't heard of the one big brand. So what do you do about that? So what did we start with um, in November of 2015? Basically, this wasn't just the first generation um, RPO because we, it is via an RPO. This was the first generation any sort of recruitment full stop. So this is what they had beforehand. 93% agency use for contracted roles, which is enormous. That includes internal. So they're not even using 7% internal in what is an enormous company. No centralized recruitment function and no method of increased employment brand awareness. Pretty much very rare for a company that size to have nothing, okay? So what did they want us to do? Well, of course, they want us to try and do a direct hiring model. A multifunctional recruitment team dealing with all contract recruitment. We deal with about 700 hires a year. And of course, increase awareness and interest in the Two Sisters brand, whether that be emphasizing the individual brands within Two Sisters or Two Sisters as a whole, depending what the unique selling point is in each situation. To add to our problems, and, and I'm sure quite a few of you will relate to this, there's 40 odd sites throughout the UK. Some pretty remote sites and lots of businesses within one business, each with their own way of doing things and each with their own intricacies of what they expect from hiring. So, gee whiz, what we're going to do. <laughs> so I just want to talk about just Simple, simple things, but simple things done well, which hopefully, even if you're really advanced in what you do, even if you're not advanced in what you do, you can resonate in some way or other, say, yeah, if we get that right, and maybe differently than I've done it, absolutely. But if we get those key things right, got more chance of success. 
So the first thing is communication. For us, this was massive, and I'll go through that in a bit more detail. Team dynamic. Well, what does the team look like if you want to be successful? There's all sorts of different models you can do, different titles, different skill set, different locations. What do you do with regards to the dynamic of the team? And a big one for me is attitude. You can have the, the most skillful recruitment team in the world, but if they haven't got the right attitude, especially in a tough environment like Two Sisters, then you're on the back foot. So what did we do with regards to communication? So you've got 43 sites, and to get around to all those people is going to cost a hell of a lot of money. So do you do it? You know, all the technology these days, do we do it online? Do we do it on Skype? You know, all sorts of different options. I'm not saying we were, we were right in what we did because it was a lot of time, effort, and cost. But basically, we went round to every single site and met with every single stakeholder and let them get it out on the table about what they want, what's happened previously, and any reservations they've got of this new model. Because even though, to me, 93% agency usage is really silly, you know, they, they were not thinking to themselves, oh, brilliant, we've got an in-house recruitment team now. Not at all. There was huge reticence. So we, we, we made sure we were visible, and we continued to be visible throughout the journey until the process was running smoothly. One other big thing that we made sure was that we got a group of stakeholders from Two Sisters bought in before we did the road shows. So HR, basically. Senior HR, all bought into the way we were going to do things so they can help us drive it. It's no good me standing there and saying this, this, and this, and they don't know me from Adam. To me, it was really, really important that we had the backup of um, key stakeholders. So there's the backing of the key influencers. There's the option. Do you go at the very top and they can then communicate it down, or do you do it from the bottom and communicate it up? There's no right or wrong answer, is there? So we decided we'd do both. We preempted what the, the questions and problems were going to be, and we were ready to answer them. I think that was key as well. Prepare for the worst. And keep that communication going. So all these processes and everything get forgotten. So make sure it's visible. Make sure you're visible, but they can go online anytime. And just because what we designed at first was the you know, potentially the right thing to do, that doesn't mean that it will work in six months, 12 months, and two years' time as we are now. So an example of that is, you know, we, we will be changing things up just to make sure that we, we, we keep up with the feedback from two sisters and the hiring managers and make sure they're happy. So what did I do with the team? And again, there's no right or wrong answer to this. So every single one of you will have your own ideas around this. But to me, it was making sure there was a blend of skills and experience. So there were some more experienced than others. There were some with different skills than each other. There was definitely different personalities. And one ex-employee of mine is laughing her head off now because of this. Um, it, that can create problems. You know, with so many different personalities and skill sets within the room, there was battles at times, don't get me wrong, because they're all trying to get one over each other at times and everything, but when it works, how powerful is that? That people can learn off each other, it doesn't matter how experienced they are, and as a whole, we can deal with every single scenario, rather than everyone being about the same and this skilled in the same way. One thing when I first started in in-house recruitment, um, my director said to me, hire people who are better than you. I thought, what do you mean? That'll do me out of a job, surely. I'm too proud for that. But it's the best bit of advice I've ever had. You cannot be the master of everything. You really can't, whether you're a recruiter, 
a coordinator, team leader, delivery manager, head of resourcing, you cannot be good at everything. So why not hire people who are? And have a mix and use them to do the things that you're not as good at. Because one, you, even if you were really good at it, you can't physically do everything. So get team members who can do some of these re things really well. So that's key to any team I've ever developed, is to, to do that. And be adaptable, get ready to change if you need to. You're not gonna get it right every time. You're really not. It, it's tough, so. Get ready to, you know, what well, I was wrong. Don't be too proud to say I was wrong and adapt. And going on to what I said previously about attitude. The, I'm a big believer that you can teach skills, or most skills. Coaching, outsource the training, whatever. But it's a lot, lot harder, and some people in this room may say, well, you can't, is teach attitude. And what I mean by attitude is that willingness to go that extra mile, that willingness to continue to develop and learn and not think I know everything. And so there's some quotes there which are quite telling and is exactly how I feel about things. Even if you can teach attitude, have you got the time when you try to develop a, a, a new recruitment model? Well, no, I don't. So I try to, wherever possible, hire people who've got that right attitude, team player. You'll all have the attributes that you think are good within a team or people that you get on with. Is that more important than having someone who's got 20 years experience? Maybe you have a bit of both. In the ideal world, you'd have someone who's highly skilled and has the right attitude. But to me, right attitude is more important. And there's a bit of a stat there, which possibly proves my point. So, where are we now, two years in? We've gone from 92% agency usage to 8.2%. Now, to me, in what is a tough, tough environment, skill shortages, salary challenges, location challenges, competitors, we, we all have these problems, but I think that's really good. It's not the best in class. There'll be guys out here who have it at 0. Point something percent or 2%. That's fantastic but I'm quite pleased with where we are. Now that's only as good of, if, what's the point in having a, a direct sourcing model if it takes you forever to, to hire people? Well, again, not best in class. I've seen um, companies out there who have this down to about 18 days. But I'm pretty pleased that it's 24 days, time to hire. I can't even compare what it was before because obviously, as well as not having a recruitment function, they had no data. Satisfaction, 95% plus. Um, most importantly to me is the candidate experience has been really, really good now because they, they wouldn't have had the ability to do candidate experience before, you know, because hiring managers, a bit of HR, a bit of everyone is trying to do the recruitment. They haven't got time to do it. So I'd imagine the candidate satisfaction wasn't too great before we got involved. I'm really proud, and that's down not to me, the team, that the candidate satisfaction is really high. Cost per hire, 2,100. Again, I know companies who've got it below 2,000. I think given what we have to do at Two Sisters, that's a fantastic achievement. Again, down to the team, not me, because they are, they've got the right attitude. We've reduced attrition by 50%. It is an industry which has quite high attrition, but we've managed to drop it, and our aim is to drop it further. And at the end of the day, money's not everything, but 3.6 million pound we've saved just on 
not using agencies. Obviously, then there's the time, emotion, savings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And to summarise, all I want to say is that every single one of us has challenges in recruitment. It, 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 it's tough. But with the right attitude, with the right processes, easy to follow processes, getting that right, as well as you know the fancy tech stuff and that you continue to develop, then we can all be a success in this room. I'm really proud to be speaking in front of you know, talent throughout the room. I was reading down the list of the companies that are here. I thought it's amazing that you're all coming out to attend here today and you've all got your own ideas, you're all good at certain things. And so I'm, I'm really pleased that I can get to speak to you in, the, in this environment. But I suppose what I would reiterate, if there's anyone who hasn't got it nailed on, is get the simple things right before you go into the fancy stuff. Get that right, then do the fancy stuff. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's it. Is there any questions? <laughs>